welcome to for our socially distanced audience that we have here and for all of you watching at home welcome to nine lessons and carols for socially distanced people we were going to go live to greenwich and helen chersky and she was going to talk about the importance of meridian time uh, but on the way there her technical hitch was she got a couple of punches waiting for my heat death but currently very preoccupied with being alive i think so we've set a project up to try and find a supernova, so an exploding star. Now we've got fresh data. There we go, two. So there we go now. <laughs> Let's see how much worse I get throughout the day. Hello, I've had better mornings, I'll be honest with you. I set off on time, as is appropriate when you're coming to uh, the home of time, and I got a puncture, but that was okay because I fixed the puncture. But I fixed it in such a hurry that apparently I'd left a bit of grit in there and the puncture popped again. Okay, and of course, robot jingle bells. Always, it's a Christmas show. Is that over the course of the next 24 hours, um, I'm going to be creating a presumably hit Christmas song. I'm all right, thanks, Robin, but I'm not the one this time having to do this, am I? I think the dangerous bits are bits where you're between obvious landmarks and you're having to tell yourself things like, well, in just an hour and 27 minutes, we've got <laughs> a vague promise of an accordion solo, but we don't know if he is coming yet. Those bits <laughs> Well, unsolved problems in physics are the ones that I would find most fun. And, and I guess, you know, we have these big uh, uh, mysteries still in physics. What is the nature of dark matter, dark energy? I, I think the ultimate challenge would be if AI can help us find a theory of everything. OK, so Neanderthals, very much in most people's minds, associated with extreme cold, you know, very intense arctic climate and every day my cage got me smaller and all the dogs they got the cooler but their services were no longer quiet well, it always starts off in all dystopian jazz novels. It always starts <laughs> off with you believing that the robots are merely your jazz helpers. That's clearly a yes. Put a big tick in there, the sun's surface temperature, about five and a half thousand degrees Celsius. That's an easy one to do. We're yeah, we've got to be very week. careful, though. Yeah. If we overdo it early on, we're in a kind of, you know, caffeine and candy frenzy, and then it's just depletion from that Well, point. the crash after that, yeah. that's The, the coffee rationing is going to be a real challenge. I, I definitely think crowdsourcing the, uh, the science of it would be Yeah, fantastic. so if we could find that out. Everyone's coping different. Different ways, different means, different mapped out systems. Some of us are aching. For some of us, just getting out of bed is bravery. Some of us are rolling our sleeves up. It's a tea infuser. And uh, if you run it under hot water, it does this weird thing. It sings. What? Uh, doing very well so far. Um, happy to be uh, joining your experiment in cognitive decline and uh, capturing that over the next 20 something hours. I've already lost count. Um, uh, which cheese is made backwards? Which cheese is made backwards? If you write down all your answers. But the, the really weird thing is, although it's clear, it still smells just like cola. Still. There we are. That is Jeff playing the piano from Forest Hill in this room. <laughs> so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about whether you have been seeing snowflakes or snow fakes. And it was my job to double and triple check the maths to be sure the probe had a safe flight. It's not the taking part that counts, it's only the winning. But this is what's available, a Mathematic Ally Certificate. Ooh. There we go. Made with the finest blue school marker pen. Watch out, we use it every day, yeah! Radioactive, radioactive. There we go. Frankie even worked on a Santa laugh. Let's hear it, Frankie. Ha! <laughs> ha! The Women's League of Health and Beauty. I've asked teenager Robbie from next door to set us up with um, Skype on this laptop. Um, and he's agreed on the proviso that I give him back his ball that Fred's had in his shed since 2009. Imperialists, we plunder the treasures, return them sometimes. They call that exchange 
history written in our grease marks and yellowed pages. If you've seen this signal in the optical, in light, is there anything in radio? That might give you an angle on it. Um, is it stationary or is it moving? For instance, is it a planet orbiting a star? No, veganism, vitamins and viz, and I never even mentioned the Smiths. There we go. That's it. So that is uh, unperformed for five years and there's a reason. You've discovered it. Now, let's... So you don't have those normal cues and you don't have those normal things that make you remember different things. Like I will remember this today because I've actually come somewhere to a real place with real people, um, which is very, very exciting. You know, you're busy. You're, you're doing all kinds of things and you're not, you're not doing that. You're not being. You're doing, you know, in, in space most of the time. How are you, Santa Claus? I'm all right. You're all right. Yeah, good, good. I always forget oh, that you oh, don't oh, have to be right. jolly till the 24th. Oh, um, no, no, it's 2020, man. For every man so sweet, the lover is untrue. So tell me, night, what would you do? The terrifying thing about COVID is it doesn't take much to get to the point where everyone is going to know somebody who has been affected and killed by this disease. So we know a lot more about how to keep safe, but unfortunately, some of these things are harder to execute than just uh, disinfecting surfaces. And I there are. It's really good that we have different versions of vaccines which look like they're they're working. Sodium, nobelium, and all cocodrilium, radon, zinc, and zinc, and rhodium, and chlorine, copper, 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 tungsten, tin, and sodium. I don't know what those sound effects mean. I'm 51 years old. No it's here either. Desk in front of me, I've got the uh, some some of our astronauts' um, captures there, and so I've just set up a laser on the back on my patio. You can see it there, pointing out to sea. I've also enlisted a couple of friends around the country. So I've got a friend in Leamington Spa with a couple of big lasers on a tower block there. The, the, there's been a shift in our perspective over the last, um, let's say, 40 or 50 years. So if you go back to the turn of the last century, so 1900, let's say, then H.G. Wells and science fiction writers and professional astronomers thought that Mars would very likely be a habitable world. That's right. I never thought this, this would be the, the case of my first week of being 40, eating pasta from a cup yeah. in a basement. Um, well, Gary Newman is responsible for one of the discoveries. I imagine it's a different Gary Newman. Uh, he may Tanya well not Stafford's be. Gary Newman no, loves stuff no. like that. The ones that really get to me are the stuff that gets shared on Facebook. Quotes like, the only disability in life is a bad attitude. Fuck off. I thought that maybe I should actually bring one of last year's shoes. Um, <laughs> do, do you remember this? Um, so You are my land You hold ambition Within your hand Hey! Okay, look, uh, like everything else, this is coming from my spare bedroom during Covid. I cut my own hair, it's very greasy at the moment. I've got a milk carton that I wee in if I can't get to the toilet in between the meetings. Um, well, when people tend to imagine the rainforest, you know, they tend to imagine it without people, but if you go there, you will see children, families interacting, no? Well, I suppose it would be, and how are you feeling today? Because I think you should be quite cross. Or are you feeling all right? <laughs> You're making a lot of progress towards hell. <laughs> I'm young. I'm Freud. Anyway, so, well, then if all the children could just start playing the bells, be 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 it would be fantastic. Okay, We're... cool. I'll go and find, find the Von Trapps and we'll set them to rehearsal. Yes, the... <laughs> These are a few of my favourite things. The Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Shunak, <laughs> zoomed me on the internet to tell me in the strongest terms possible that my annual distribution of free toys represented an unacceptable socialist intervention in the marketplace. You know, what do you think when you've unstrapped out of your chair and you pull yourself weightless for the first time and you can see uh, from overhead of Dublin or London, you can see Rome and you can see Stockholm, you know. Love for the family.
families that gather below. Love for the stranger that you'll never know. I should say by way of introduction that my band recorded these bits remotely and I shall be mixing it live because I haven't seen this all the way through yet. So here we go. I think the end of that paragraph is together they vomited into the spiky grass. Trialer by right, Dwight's in the light by trialer by right in the light by Dwight. I've actually been joined by a co conspirator, my colleague Terry, over there. Uh, hello, Terry. And the effects of nitrous intoxication are short lived. And now, to have a lecture about nitrous oxide in front of the kind of Christmas tree you'd normally see Noel Edmonds doing an appeal in front of <laughs> while holding a baby, that's just magnificent. Twist it. Pull it. Oh, that's not. Oh, it's broken. <laughs> Right, me pooms, uh, very naughty, very naughty. He, ho, 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 he laughed me pooms, so naughty they are, and he hid them under me bod, but me whiff on me pooms, and she was very crass with me not do. He can tell ye that for through. Walking hand in hand, I secretly mourn for the days that are not yet gone. You know, if you're alive with the awareness that you and everyone you love is going to die, does it really matter how much polo you play in between? Um, I can't tell if it's my screen or not, but it looks like Robin has half a beard. Is that correct? There is this uh, repugnance at um, robots or artificial intelligence which seem almost human. You know, so it's like the fact that his wife is practicing witchcraft is completely at odds with his core beliefs. Five-hour improvised opera. <laughs> so what are you, uh, you going to play for us? I don't know. What do you want? I really like Christmas. According to the budget of the universe, since Tony likes cosmology, most of the universe is dark stuff that we don't understand what it is. It's a bit of a mystery. Firstly, there are three types of water. Can you, just to find out, because we're not entirely sure, because there's been a Wi-Fi problem, uh, can you still, so, so if I say uh, the secret message, which is Trandom, that is the secret message, Trandom, if you are still able to uh, hear us watching on YouTube, please now type Trandom, and we will find out what's going on. <laughs> hey, guys. I think you're back. Hello, everyone. I hope you can see us now. I'm looking in the chat room. We haven't had a sleep, by the way. We should make this clear. We've not no. used this for snoozing. No. We've actually been talking about showbiz and music. We have. We've just um, been carrying on as normal, essentially. Uh, a lot of Buster Keaton jokes ended up in the goodies. Uh, it was They were the equivalent of the, what The Simpsons are to a lot of people now, I suspect. You know? I mean, you had Get Smart, I Dream of Jeannie, Bewitched, uh, the goodies, and then maybe the Kenny Everett show. I mean, when you're when you're a cosmologist, you're studying, you know, the beginning of the universe, the evolution of the cosmos. Um, things don't happen quickly, and they don't change dramatically very much. Uh, to be fair, they were bought on eBay secondhand because apparently uh, they don't okay. make pop it extreme money back on anymore. This one. <laughs> it's Yanni, I say. Yanni, Dorothy's son, Langstaff. Right, this is too complicated. I need to go one step back. 
as humans, we drop into the world sort of half-baked, and then we absorb everything around us, our culture, our language, the beliefs of the people around us, and so on. And, uh, yeah, I can certainly feel myself sort of being slightly distant from uh, what my brain and hands are trying to do. Um, now imagine what happens. These waves, I've drawn them, they've all got the same wavelength. The distance between the peaks and the troughs is the same, right? So imagine if they're slightly different. Professor Butterworth, they were talking about uh, phases and waves, and I'm going to attempt something extremely silly. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, Happy... Uh, th that was like having Yoko Ono in the room. That was like one of those great kind of, you know, uh, 1960s art happenings. Over the past few months, players in the multiplayer spacefaring game EVE Online have been able to complete a mini game, which is called Project Discovery, to help scientists in the fight against COVID-19. Now, I get it, right? This is different. We're trying to approach work from a different perspective. We're thinking about work as an activity, not as a destination. But Wow, that was like, that was like watching a Silit Bang commercial about how to do a Zoom meeting. Genetic engineering now offers the possibility of manipulating genes to obtain characteristics in humans for disease resistance. There is a way to rescue order rake in the wasteland of energy and bring it to rest. Absolute zero. Ah! Woo! <laughs> you idiot, you failed. And you kind of go, this is Trump's America. And this hopefully will make your Christmas very fun. Here we go. Three, two, one. And that's how you make a fireball out of custard while eating real custard made from actual egg yolks, which is super yummy. And that's my science for Christmas, Robin. Yeah, so um, Indigenous astronomy, I think it's, it's an area that's been overlooked pretty, pretty largely on our continent and I guess also worldwide because um, there are a number of Indigenous cultures with really rich histories. And I spoke about all the different ways that Aboriginal people have found um, incredible uses for these plants. 23, yeah. 22, 21, 20, 19... 18, 17, 16. You know, I spend 22 hours waiting and two hours doing what I love, you know, and that's basically what, what happens to musicians. So, you know, at that time, I was so, I was in the... And all the flame trees and the weed you who don't know if you are just joining us uh the the charities we're giving to our doctors without borders aka menace house on frontier uh mind uh the uh king's place uh also their 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 music charity and uh turn to us which is to help people in uh financial uh difficulties as well so right fruit needs to breathe and at the same time as fruit is breathing i am going to be making layers which i will explain in a bit so uh, cashew nut sank through the baileys and is floating on top of the Kahlua. I'm going to have to put quite a lot in. You see that? So it's actually sunk to the bottom of the baileys and it's poking out into the bottom of the curacao here. And uh, it's nice that you've given an alibi for anyone who's going, I am not a heavy drinker. <laughs> I am a, a secret theoretical physicist working on floating objects. Look, my, my breakfast is ready, Robin. I'm cooking oh, a bit beautiful. of bacon. I know you're vegetarian, so I'll, the bacon can be for me, but... I'll bring this up here. Hopefully the light will be bright enough. I'll move the, the big light there. <laughs> yeah, so it seems like on average most people need between seven and nine hours sleep. And if we look at a population level, people who get less than seven, but also people who get more than nine, tend to be less healthy in the long run. So the viewers came onto the Zooniverse site and they sorted through 100,000 candidate supernovae. Um, and we found um, some interesting things. I'm looking at a list on my screen of 26 possible supernovae. Which... So people sent in us their pictures of everyday life. Now, I have not seen a single one of these. <laughs> um, and the idea is that what I'm going to do is be shown them cold. 
Uh, I assume I'll be able to see them on the screen. Where's it? Oh, up here, yeah? And I'm going to find a bit of everyday science in each one. And basically, this is the test. Is if you turn them on end, you can hang something from the spine of the first book. So it is true that if you drop toast off a table, um, it does tend to fall butter side down. It is nothing to do with the mass of the butter. So I'm trying not to do all that. I'm trying not to repeat the ones I've done before. Because obviously, what I really want to talk about is um, whether or not they sink or float. But the bit you can't hold on to doesn't have to go around in circles, and so that escapes out into the rest of the universe. Right, now am I allowed to stop? You're done, you're done. It's, it's, the, it's the physical feeling. It's not like my brain's still all right, but everything from the neck below is just going, yeah. Well, I think we've all looked for different ways to connect, haven't we? And um, whether that's through reading people's words, which is a really powerful way of connecting with another human's thoughts, I always think. Um, or, or through social media or doing things like this. I'm so glad we could do it. I'm well, sad not to be on stage. I'm sad not to be watching from the wings, but I've been watching from the wings on YouTube and it's been fantastic. In the background, we've got one of the instruments that UCL made for the spacecraft. So this is the um, part of the solar wind analyzer and it measures electrons in the solar wind. So are you, are you in, back in Norway now? Last time I saw you, you were in London. I am back in Norway. There you go. That is definitely wow. that definitely looks better than London. <laughs> that's not that's not acting. <laughs> Can anyone guess the continent that may well have the biggest issues with Wi-Fi? <laughs> yes, I mean I've I've had people uh, yeah in in the Antarctic survey say it, it, it's sort of the equivalent of going to space but without leaving the planet. But um, we uh, yeah especially on Bird Island in the winter there's only four of us here. And you can only get to the island by ship. And obviously, they, when you have ships involved, you then have to have the good weather and the decent sea states to actually come and get us. So, yeah, it, it, it definitely feels more remote, I suppose, in some of the places that we work, because it's just harder to get to us if we have to. That's fantastic. Alexandra, thank you so much for joining us. I know it's, it's been very difficult to get in contact, but just to get a little bit of that picture and also for you to be our final continent over the 24-hour show as well. Thank you very much for doing that. That's great. I found delight in the street scenery of London for many years, like weirdly specific distances on road signs. I think one of the big news stories for me this year has been the Arctic heatwave. Uh, 38 degrees C in Siberia, um, you know, the sea ice sort of struggling in some parts of the Arctic to regrow. Uh, no, it's not my first time. I've been up for 23 <laughs> hours. Oh, what do you think you are, sentient or something? Huey, Louie or Dewey? I wouldn't save you in silent running. Hi. Anyway, so there we go. This is the uh, world's best spectator sport, clearly. Because uh, this is the 23rd hour of the show. If at any point I yawn, it is in no way uh, as a reaction to you explaining the beauty of space. I've not had some kind of Damascene pseudo-scientific moment of becoming a flat earther who yawns at astronauts. It is merely due to my physical decrepitude. And when you look at the Earth from space, you don't think, well, I certainly didn't think, I don't know what Samantha th thought when she was in space, she was up there for much longer than me, but I didn't think once about the material objects that I own on Earth. I thought about my family, my friends, the people who I know and love on Earth. You know, on the one hand, this isolation from Earth and your loved ones back home, but on the other hand, you're going to be in this small crew and you really have to get along well with your uh, crewmates for, for quite a long trip to Mars. So that's going to be an important aspect psychologically as well. That is a, a worrying thing, isn't it? That it was only on the first day of the mission they found out that the third crew member liked to whistle all the time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, 18 months. The old blood moon is setting in the west And all the birds that flew away are now turning to their nests I should find, um, what, what's going to happen to the art? What, what, what are you going to do with it afterwards? We will be uh, auctioning these off. Um, so that can add to our, our growing uh, sum that's going to charity. So until about 6am, you were pretty much flatlining-ish. Yeah, I did not master um, that other bop it. 
So maybe we can say that your adenosine system is, is more important than your body clock system because it seems like you're getting more and more tired the longer you're awake. How much coffee have you been drinking? Just oh, I've very little. I've, I've, I've had three uh, coffees throughout the, the whole night. I've just had one now. I've just started on a new coffee. But I, it's definitely improved okay. now. But there was a point where I really... That, that, that major slump that you get when you've been up for 24 hours. Uh, I can't even count to 10 in French. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept. Ah, ah. Sorry, I've got a wheat allergy. Are you in, how are you feeling in terms of confidence? Is it one of those things where you are worried that when you do wake up tomorrow after actually having slept, you're going to go, what have I created there? Well, yeah, I definitely am. Is, that, is they going to live on the internet with my name on it and I'm going to feel perhaps conflicted about it? I'm excited. <laughs> I think this is your true journey to the avant-garde. You've always wanted to journey to the avant-garde. Oh, well, I mean, and yeah, I I've certainly have been there a few times uh, the last 24 hours. The kids on the hill, must be gone, must be gone. What's his record down there? How, how's the pain jump around is what we've had in this room. There it is. It's correct. A lovely knees up version of Yeah, jump in around. the lead already. Well, we've got really exciting news, actually, um, which is that we've achieved our target. We found not just a supernova, but a special kind of supernova. So we got observations in from our friends in Hawaii who've been following up on discoveries made by Nine Lessons viewers via the Zooniverse. Um, and uh, we, I want to talk about one particular object. We've got about 25 candidates, but there's one in particular that's good. So if we've got slides, if, if Trent's awake back there, uh, and we can show you the, the first image, um, yeah, got hopefully that. you can see that. Yeah. So based only on this supernova which we did not know about 24 hours ago, and based only on the calculations which I've done after a pot of coffee this morning um, and the spectrum that we've taken, we can calculate that something called the Hubble constant, which is the rate of ex expansion in the universe, is 76.25 kilometers per second per megaparsec, which means nothing to you, but translates to an age of the universe of 12.8 billion years. So, so that's just based on one supernova. That's our very own nine lessons calculation. Now, that's a bit less. It's about a billion years less than the traditional um, uh, number, which is 13.8 billion. Uh, and so you shouldn't suddenly switch. Don't throw out a billion years worth of, of history just on the basis of one supernova. But it does tell you that when we put this one into uh, the box with all of the other supernovae that, that our surveys and our project are capturing, we're likely to have collectively reduced the age of the universe a little bit. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, at the beginning of the show, I asked for, for uh, submissions uh, for this track, uh, and I've been hastily trying to compile it uh, whilst uh, the show's been going on. Let us give us one more final pleasure. Drink it up and forget about it all. When I was floating by the window, I felt this great sense of wonder and awe, and I felt like a little tiny ant, you know, looking at, at a giant forest. The Earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. And I am on the meridian line for 12 o'clock. Brilliant, so it is turn 12. I can hear the bells chiming over there from the local church. So this is, here we are on the, on the, uh, the earth has spun one full rotation while you've been in that dark room at the bottom of King's Place. I will now hand you over to our producer, Trent Burton, who is an insomniac and wants everyone else to be, and therefore that's how he came up with this show. I've just got some thank yous we have to do. Careful with your foot. This is a terrible thing, right? Trent has not been out of his house. He's been really, really safe and really, really careful for the entire kind of pretty much the nine months, rarely ever going out. And then, so this meant when he left his flat the other day, on the very first step he took, he twisted his ankle and it basically went black. So that is the kind of thing that, and nevertheless, he's then had, uh, you know, been doing this. We've basically been here pretty much for 48 hours uh, prepping the whole show. Uh, so uh, Trent, in particular, 
put together so many of the of, of the things which took an enormous amount of work and that's why anyone who is still watching can I say if, if you are able to support the Patreon account as well this is uh, we've been making free shows uh, for the whole of, of lockdown we make free shows at any time but we've been making even more and uh, we really now need to get to the point of starting to fund them Close the it did I Thank you very much. Hopefully next year we will be back with uh, a kind of normal show, well, more normal show. Um, and uh, we are definitely uh, not going to do... Uh, there was a point where I really thought that I was going to be a ghost by the end of this. <laughs> and um, so thank you very much to everyone to play us out. Oh, really? With oh, his, oh, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm with his avant-garde jazz. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, with a 24-hour reworking <laughs> of a rare Ornette Coleman album, it is Steve Pretty. Brilliant. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you, everyone.